Human reproduction, this is video number three where we cover the menstrual cycle and the hormones that control this cycle. So what is the menstrual cycle all about? Well, with the onset or the beginning of puberty, follicles are stimulated to mature each month in the female ovaries. So a follicle contains an immature egg surrounded by other cells and these follicles are stimulated to mature, but only one of them will form the graphene follicle. And it's inside the graphene follicle where the female gamete, the female egg, is produced by meiosis. Eventually, mid-cycle, the graphene follicle will burst or rupture and it releases the egg. This is called ovulation. During this time, the endometrium, which is the lining of the uterus, is stimulated by hormones to build up or thicken in readiness to receive a possible fertilized egg. And if fertilization does not take place, well, then the endometrium will eventually break down. And this is known as menstruation. These events happen every month, approximately on a 28 day cycle until the lady or the woman reaches menopause. And this cycle is controlled by hormones. And this is what this video is mostly discussing. The menstrual cycle is under the influence of four particular hormones and it's important that you can list these and discuss what each of the hormones do. So I always say write down FOLP, F-O-L-P. It will help you remember the hormones but also the sequence in which they occur in the cycle. So first up or F is follicle stimulating hormone produced in the pituitary gland. O is oestrogen produced in the ovaries and we learn specifically where later on. Luteinizing hormone produced in the pituitary gland and progesterone also produced in the ovaries and we learn specifically where later on. So just write down FOLP. So first up, it's follicle stimulating hormone. It's produced in the pituitary gland and it travels in the blood to the ovaries where it stimulates follicles to develop. Remember, follicles have those immature egg cells, those oocytes. So one follicle will develop and it will become the graphene follicle and it's inside the graphene follicle where the female egg, the female gamete, is formed by meiosis. And that's it, follicle stimulating hormone. So next we're on to oestrogen and we're in the ovaries. So as that graphene follicle forms, it produces more and more oestrogen and the rising levels of oestrogen cause the lining of the uterus, the endometrium, to rebuild. And as the oestrogen increases, so as the levels of oestrogen get higher and higher, it inhibits, so it blocks the secretion of follicle-stimulating hormone in the pituitary gland. That's really important. And high oestrogen levels are eventually going to stimulate the secretion of the next hormone, luteinizing hormone in the pituitary gland. So you could draw a little diagram like this to remind yourself that high oestrogen levels will inhibit the secretion of follicle stimulating hormone but stimulate the secretion of luteinizing hormone, both of these produced in the pituitary gland. So next is luteinizing hormone and it's secreted by the pituitary gland and it travels in the blood to the ovaries and it's a surge in luteinizing hormone or a sudden rise in luteinizing hormone on day 14 that causes ovulation. This is the graphene follicle rupturing or bursting to release the egg and what remains of the graphene follicle will become this structure known as the corpus luteum. So just to be clear, it's a surge in luteinizing hormone on approximately day 14 of the cycle. So it's this increase in luteinizing hormone that causes ovulation, the rupture of the graphene follicle to release the egg. And basically the graphene follicle, the cells that remain of it, turn into this structure known as the corpus luteum. So next is on to progesterone. It's the last hormone. It's the P in FOLP and it's secreted by this structure known as the corpus luteum in the ovary. And this progesterone is going to influence the endometrium and also the pituitary gland. So what remains of the graphene follicle after ovulation becomes the corpus luteum. And this secretes progesterone and low levels of oestrogen. Don't forget the oestrogen, but mostly progesterone. And progesterone will cause the endometrium, the lining of the uterus, to build up further. But it's really important that you know and that you can recall that high levels of progesterone and the oestrogen are going to inhibit follicle stimulating hormone and luteinizing hormone secretion by the pituitary gland. We associate high progesterone levels with maintaining a thickened endometrium, so keeping the lining of the uterus built up, the endometrium built up. Progesterone levels will drop if the corpus luteum breaks down and it's this that causes menstruation where the lining of the uterus, the endometrium comes away. However, the corpus luteum will not break down if fertilization has occurred. 
So it's usually a good idea to summarise the key events of FALP, those four hormones that you have to know about. So start with follicle stimulating hormone or first up is follicle stimulating hormone. Made in the pituitary gland, it stimulates those follicles to develop in the ovaries and we know that one will mature to become the graphene follicle. Then we've oestrogen and the graphene follicle is going to secrete more and more oestrogen and this causes the endometrium, the lining of the uterus to build up and high levels of oestrogen inhibit the secretion of follicle stimulating hormone and also will stimulate the secretion of luteinizing hormone. So then we've luteinizing hormone made in the pituitary gland and a sudden surge in its secretion on day 14 causes ovulation so it causes the rupture of the graphene follicle. What remains of the graphene follicle becomes the corpus luteum. Then we have progesterone. It's secreted by the corpus luteum and also oestrogen is too, but mostly progesterone and it stimulates the endometrium to build up, so the lining of the uterus. High levels will inhibit the secretion of follicle stimulating hormone and luteinizing hormone and a drop in progesterone levels will cause menstruation. So let's have a very basic summary of the menstrual cycle. So day one commences with menstruation, the first day of menstruation. This is when the endometrium, the lining of the uterus, is breaking down. And it's breaking down because progesterone levels have dropped. And when progesterone levels are low, it means that follicle-stimulating hormone, its production, is no longer inhibited. So the pituitary gland starts to produce follicle-stimulating hormone. Follicle stimulating hormone will then travel in the blood to the ovaries where it stimulates follicles to develop and eventually the graphene follicle is going to form and it will secrete oestrogen. High levels of oestrogen will inhibit the production of follicle stimulating hormone but it also stimulates the endometrium to rebuild. Not forgetting that high oestrogen levels will also stimulate the production of luteinizing hormone by the pituitary gland and a surge in luteinizing hormone causes ovulation on approximately day 14. So after ovulation what remains of the graphene follicle is going to become the corpus luteum and it starts to produce progesterone in increasing amounts and also oestrogen but mostly progesterone and it's the high progesterone and the oestrogen levels that inhibits follicle stimulating hormone and luteinizing hormone and also causes the endometrium to build up further. So remember, high progesterone means that the thickened endometrium is going to be maintained. In the last few days of the cycle, if there is no fertilization, well then the corpus luteum is going to degenerate or break down, and so progesterone levels are going to drop. You know that if progesterone levels drop, the endometrium is no longer maintained, but low progesterone levels also means that follicle stimulating hormone and luteinizing hormone will no longer be inhibited and so the cycle can begin again. Two hormones that are really important for the whole of the menstrual cycle and are present throughout are oestrogen and progesterone. Oestrogen is dominant before ovulation and then progesterone is dominant after ovulation. So at the end of this video what should I know? Well you should be able to give an account of FALP follicle stimulating hormone, oestrogen, luteinizing hormone and progesterone. Detail where all of these hormones are made, where they go, what they do and at what stage roughly in the cycle they're produced. Know which hormones will increase in levels and what this does to the endometrium and know which hormones inhibit the secretion of others and how this alters throughout the cycle. So please bear in mind that this is a very simplified version of events and if ever there was a time to do exam questions on part of a chapter this is it. So please find the exam questions now and the official marking schemes and start to do the questions. So the best of luck, hope the revision is going well, take care.